Mayapple, or as it's also known as Potophyllum platatum, is a member of the barberry family and belongs to the Potophyllum genus. This plant is a perennial, meaning its lifespan is longer than two years, and it grows in a habitat of rich woods and pastures. The plant itself grows up to a foot and a half feet tall, and it has a solitary white flower which is in bloom between May and June. The flower itself grows up to two inches wide and has six to nine waxy petals which sit between two large branching leaves. The fruit can be observed between July and August which is yellowish in color, lemon shaped and two inches long. The plant has opposite leaves and the leaves are toothed, deeply cleft and flowerless when only one leaf is present. The root is rhizomatous. Warning: Overdoses of mayapple have caused death. The Cherokee and Iroquois considered the root joints poisonous and suggest only using the portions between the joints. Tiny amounts of the roots and leaves are poisonous. The powdered root and resins are highly allergenic and may cause skin and eye problems. Do not eat the leaves, roots, green fruit, or seeds because they are extremely cathartic. A cathartic is a purgative or laxative causing extreme evacuation accompanied by pain. Now mayapple has been used for a variety of different purposes. As for its edibility, the Cherokee, Chippewa, Iroquois, Menominee, and Meskwaki use the fruit as food. Harvest the fruit when the plant begins to die. The ripe, yellowish colored fruit is edible. The skin is bitter tasting, so discard it with the cathartic seeds. The pulp is edible raw or cooked and has a lemon-like flavor. Cook the fruit into a jelly by adding pectin, or drink the remnant juice, or you can add it to another beverage. The Iroquois mashed the fruit pulp into small cakes, then dried it in the sun or by the fire. You can also mix it with cornbread and store it for future use. Add cakes to warm water to make a sauce or relish. The Menominee preserved the fresh ripe fruits, and the Meskwaki made a conserve or candied fruit by cooking pieces of the fruit with sugar. Now for the plant's medicinal properties. Again, the Cherokee considered the root joints poisonous, so only use the portions between the joints. Now, the root was used to expel parasites from the body and the boiled roots were eaten as a purgative. A drop of the juice from the fresh root was placed in the ear for deafness. In a tincture, soak the root in whiskey and take for rheumatism and as a purgative. The powdered root was used on sores and ulcers as a dermatological aid and eaten to correct constipation as a laxative. The Delaware and the Delaware of Oklahoma use the root as a laxative and spring tonic. Now, the Iroquois also consider the roots poisonous and suggest cutting out the branching rootlets. The root was used in a decoction, infusion, tincture, or chewed as a raw root and used as a laxative or cathartic. As a laxative remedy, chew a piece of the root the length of the first joint of your little finger. As for a cathartic remedy, Bake the roots until dry, but don't burn, and then grind them into a powder. Add about a dime size to about one cup of water and let it stand for 10 minutes. Drink with an empty stomach and rehydrate with plenty of fluids. For a dermatological aid, a compound decoction was used for boils. Add seven field thistle roots and one big handful of burdock roots, a lapa or a minus, to one quart water. Boil down to a pint and take half a wine glass one hour apart. Follow with salts. Mayapple has historically been used instead of salts. The Meskwaki Indians use the root as a physic, which is a medicine that purges, is cathartic, and laxative. They also used it for rheumatism and made a decoction of the root and used it to induce vomiting. Now, according to the King's American Dispensatory, Overdoses of mayapple have caused death.
prolonged gastrointestinal inflammation and irritation. The green root internally is an irritant poison causing grippings, extreme vomiting, and other unpleasant symptoms. The root powder will cause irritation to the mucous membrane. The solvents used to bring out the essence or medicinal value of the plant is alcohol and boiling water. The actions of this plant is cathartic, hepatic, meaning affecting the liver, and it will also cause watery discharge from the bowels, increases the bioflow to the intestines, has been used as an alternative, which is an agent causing healthful change without perception, a tonic, a matic, and a purgative. The uses of this plant has been for a menorrhea, dysmenorrhea, skullful, rheumatism, syphilis, incontinence of urine, worms, and a few afflictions of the bladder. As a cathartic, its effects are permanent and leaves the bowels in an improved condition. In too large of a dose, violent emetocatharsis may result. Common salts increase its purgative power. As for the dosage, the recently dried root is used in doses of 30 to 60 grains as a cathartic and emetic. Reactions are dependent upon the age of the person or roasting of the root. As a cathartic, doses of the powder root range from 10 to 30 grains, and as a tincture, 10 to 60 drops. As a sialagogue, which is an agent that increases the flow of saliva, or as an alternative, the dosage ranges from 1 to 5 grains of the powder, or from 1 to 10 drops as a tincture. Other than its edible or medicinal purposes, mayapple has been used as an insecticide. The Cherokee soak corn in the ooze of the roots before planting to keep away crows and other insects. As a fertilizer and insecticide, the Iroquois mix the root with water as corn medicine for sprouting corn. The Menominee made a decoction of the whole plant and water potato plants to kill potato bugs.